Okay, so we're going to start with the head, and I'm going to use a number 10 brush. I'm going to go very softly into, into the color. I'm going to make it very pale, and I also have got to remember to keep my whites. So we know that the crown is dark. I'm going to take some of that blue that I just put up there and spread it around a little bit into the white because the sky <laughs> reflects off-white mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave the background of this painting white and therefore I have to identify where the boundary of the bird is. Make it look like the wind is blowing a little bit. And then I'm going to come down across the top of its beak with the same blue. And then with the wet brush, kind of move that around. <clears throat> you, a painting should have both hard edges of the paint and soft edges. So when I come in um, with just the paint, you get more of a hard edge. And then when you come in with um, the water, you get a softer edge. Um, okay, we're going to bring a little bit more of that blue down the throat. Now the bird will not end up being this color because I'll put other layers a layer color uh, and I'll do that when the time is right as far as how dry or how wet the bird is. Now I want that edge of the neck to be a hard edge but I don't want this contour to be hard edge so I, with the brush with just water in it you can move that around. Now while I've got some of this blue in the brush. I'm also going to mix a little bit with the burnt sienna, that little gray tone, and just just drop some of that color in under kind of under his chin, her chin. I don't know if she's a grandma or a grandpa. And this is that's kind of a dark spot right there, I think if I recall, right? Now to make this painting, you can see how the when there's water the paint goes zoom and make little little squirrelies. To make the painting more colorful, let's mix some of that phthalo blue with a little bit of that uh, quinacridone red. Never been a favorite, but for some reason it seemed to me that it was a decent choice for this painting. So where do we want a little color in here? We don't want everything to just all be the same. Add a little little purple. It's a painting after all. It's not a photograph of a heron. Let some of that come around there. There, and now I'm going to go to some yellow. Want that. I don't want that yellow to be too thin. Shake some of the water out of the brush. And we're going to dance around a little bit here and there with some yellow tones because this bird does have a yellow beak. Yellow, orange. I want the tip to be quite yellow. So this cadmium yellow is a warm, bright yellow. Another reason I chose cadmium is because 
He said the colors are very cool and kind of icy. And, and you want to contrast between warm colors and cool colors. You at least want some of each in a painting. The underside of his bill isn't going to be just bright yellow. We're also going to add some quinacridone red. See what color we get. That's kind of pretty. So feed that in here to the bottom of the beak. Now this area of the bird is white, but I don't want it to look just white because you won't be able to see that it's even there. So I'm going to first I put some water in and then add a little of that orangey color. And I might have got, got a little more than I wanted, maybe not, adding more water, just so that we know that that's part of the bird. Let that run into the green. Okay, let's take a little bit of a break. So we've moved along a little in the painting. It's starting to dry out a little bit on the gator board. So we'll just spritz again. Keep that paper happy and uh, equal moisture. And another technique is to take plastic and lay it over the part that you aren't painting on. Uh, that will help it, help the paper just to stay moist so you're not always fighting with paper drying out. I'm going to paint the feet next because they're so fun. Turn, turn this guy this way because he's so long. Yes. We're going to paint the legs next and what you need to think about is that this leg is closer to us than this leg. Therefore, this leg needs to be lighter color or could be yellow. Yellow always feels like it's a little closer. So I'm going to paint I'm going to paint the back leg first and I'm going to just dance down, down the bird with um, any of the paints that I have chosen. I'm going to want to start with more bluey purpley kind of color I think here. Purpley, grab a little burnt sienna. Okay, so we want to get the idea of that this leg is probably wet because the bird lives in water. So we want to leave white, which will help it help the leg look wet. Um, I'm just going to dance with the brush with with color. Put a little bit down here. You want to spread your color around. Now that's, um, I think I want to green that down a little bit. I'm going to put a little cadmium in there and more of our phthalo blue. There we go. And, and I wanted kind of a grade green. So I used the burnt sienna whatever was in the brush, picked up a little. Okay, so that's feather that's just above that leg. Oh, this is a not a very pretty color, pretty ugly. How could any color be ugly? some of this orange just for the 
heck of it. Just a little swirly. The heron's legs are covered in, they're not welts, they're, <laughs> well, you've looked at a chicken leg. It's a texture of a chicken leg. Takes a while. I think we need more actual blue. They have these most remarkable knees. It's fun to add, add a little yellow in here too. Of course, it's turning green because I'm bumping it up against blue. Isn't that lovely? See how that just turns the color from blue to green? And, and when you put the yellow next to the purple, you get kind of a browny tone. Nice thing about these brown, these round Kolinsky sables is that uh, they they keep a very nice point there. Several days later, the painting has dried, and I'm going to just drop in a little bit of yellow here and there to help carry the eye through the painting. Just, just little dots, so that it, um, it's just a, a technique to help move the eye around. Put a little bit more on its knees. Yeah, I think that it's done. <laughs>